Someone who knows Nicola Sturgeon well as a politician and a friend is the actress and comedian Elaine C. Smith, who joined me in the studio. So you've known Nicola Sturgeon for a long time. What's your reaction been to news that she's going to be resigning? Uh, initially sad and I suppose a bit uh, shocked at the timing of it, like a lot of people, but actually not that surprised, really. Uh, deep down, um, I, I think most of us in the world are suffering uh, from uh, post-COVID. I don't think we've processed what really happened there. And, and watching her uh, navigate the country and herself and her government through those two years and beyond, um, I, I think will have taken a huge toll. I, I think Jean Freeman talked about that yesterday, mm -hmm. that we can't underestimate the toll that that would take on somebody. And I like the fact that as a woman, it was something that had been hinted at before in, in private conversations. But, but I, as a woman, I love the fact that she's taken control of it herself. Yeah, and you've campaigned with her uh, many times. I think we've got some pictures of oh, you no. here out campaigning. Oh, there we are. You look great, oh, Elaine. This is the, the Holyrood election in 2011. Yeah. Um, what was it like being out and about with her? Actually, do you know, we, we, we actually were able to have a laugh and, and I have to say there were more innocent times then. I don't think there was the level of toxic uh, debate that has been around. But actually what I remember about that day is uh, she was then health minister, I think, and a, an old man, a lovely man, and his wife got off the bus and he fell and he cracked his skull. And we ended up helping him, and the health minister had to phone for an ambulance. And I do remember at the time her saying, "This better turn up," <laughs> because can you imagine the story? Of, and it, thankfully, we were quite near his government, so we were near the then Southern General, and it came. And uh, I, we got a lovely letter from the family. And all I remember is thinking, this poor man, as he's coming round, and he sat next to us, must have thought of Kelly C. Smith and the health minister helping me up off the pavement. Um, she was doing her job there, she? was wasn't doing she? her job. I, oh, my impression <laughs> has always been she was incredibly efficient, uh, dedicated, uh, a conviction politician. And, and also, she's not someone who is... Uh, naturally gregarious. She's not a show off like me. <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say she comes across as quite dry and shy. Is that, I mean, is that how you find her? I think uh, she's got a great sense of humour and, and a great intellect and, and certainly, uh, you know, really does know what to laugh at and have a, a laugh at herself as well. But I think she's, she's not what you would see a, a really outgoing character. I think essentially she is quite shy and... Uh, and so, therefore, to have achieved what she has without being that large ego, if you like, going out there is, is even more remarkable. And first female first minister, Absolutely. how important has that been, do you think? Oh, I think for Scotland. If you had told me 30 years ago, before we had a parliament even, that we would have had a, a, a female first minister in Scotland. I remember, in, I think it was the Scotsman 30 odd years ago before the parliament came in, if we had a Scottish president, who did I want? And I said, oh, Helena Kennedy, you know, top human rights lawyer, Baroness now. Um, uh, you know, and, and the guy went, oh, is that, is, and I said, I, could you, I just point out she's a woman. <laughs> the thought of a woman in a position of power like that. And even when, when uh, Nicola Sturgeon was deputy first minister and then it was touted that she was going to become first minister, the, uh, we have to remember the level of misogyny, the level of stuff, even within the movement and within the SME, who is she? She's too young. She's a woman. The punters don't know her. All of those things. So the arguments that we're getting now about who is there in the SNP to take over, I think are a bit spurious in that uh, the media, yourselves included, I suppose, concentrate on leaders all the time. And, it, and the movement and, and politics are about much more than who is the leader. And... And I think we have to cast our minds back to how many people completely underestimated her. But many people do believe that the independence movement is now in trouble. Alex Salmond has been saying that the cause is in a cul-de-sac now. I think the, the cause may have been stalled for a bit. I think there is 
uh, there has been difficulties with the Supreme Court decision, with possibly the decision to make the next general election a de facto referendum. And those would have fed into, if you're an astute politician, maybe this is as far as we can take it here. Maybe what we have to do is step away and, and uh, let the grassroots, and the, we have to remember this is a wide, wide movement, a very broad church of people who haven't gone away. I mean, we have to remember in, in 2011, uh, it was 28%. Maybe at best 32% of people in the country believe that. I can't believe we've stayed where we are. Mm -hmm. And that independence, this may well be the call to arms for I don't think it's gone at all. So it could be a real watershed moment, I suppose. But yeah. who, who do you fancy seeing as the next leader? Oh, whoever whoever can take us to the next step. Um, maybe Andy Murray. Maybe. Andy Murray's thrown his hat He's in the ring. Hat in really? the ring. I vote for him. <laughs> um, a big tennis fan. But uh, there are... I, I think one of the problems is people say we don't know anybody, but actually if you go out to most people in the country and say, who is Labour's shadow uh, environment minister in Westminster, they couldn't tell you. Most people don't know who politicians are until they're thrust in front of you. So I think there is much more talent in there and we want someone, man or woman, to come along and and it breathe new life into the movement. But I have to say, regardless of who the leader is, the movement is energised again. OK, we'll have to leave it there. But, Elaine, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Pleasure.